Okay. So, hello, welcome everybody to the second webinar <clears throat> of the scientific computing support group at CSCS. And uh, this webinar will be about uh, the CLE, Cray Linux environment, and CUDA, NVIDIA CUDA toolkit upgrade that will take place uh, uh, on Pitts Diant uh, next month, May 11th and 12th. So as of May 12th, you will have access to the latest <coughs> programming environment as well, released by Cray during the month of April for the XC series, including Pitts Diant. The webinar is a, one of a series that is intended for, the, for our user community in order to improve our communication about features and the um, software environment that is released on the uh, HPC system that we have. In particular, this upgrade uh, will have an impact on the community since uh, the Cray Linux environment is the operating system that is running on the Pitstein flagship machine. And this implies that you might need to recompile your applications, as we will see in the end. So it, it has a great impact. And that, that's why we are particularly sensitive to that <coughs> topics. Also, the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit will be upgraded. So the, you will have access now after May 12 to version 6.5. Let's see then the outline of the current webinar. So we will start the first section with the Cray Linux environment. We will talk about the compatibility and differences with respect to the previous Linux environment that we had. We will outline briefly the main enhancements available in the Cray Linux environment version 5.2. Upgrade 02 that will be available after the upgrade in May 12th. And then a quick view on the documentation that will be available after the, <clears throat> after the main um, highlights of the presentation has been um, showed on the CLE. After the first section, we will have a quick uh, pause. So if you want to uh, start asking questions in the chat, you are free to do that. There are my colleagues available in the room who can take your questions, who are experts in the different fields that we are going to talk about in the current webinar. The second section will be about the NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit upgrade. So what is NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit? What are the new features, especially the highlights, that has been available in version 6.0 and version 6.5, which will be the one to which we will upgrade our system? which will be the performance improvements that you can expect in the new version of the CUDA toolkit that will be available. And then again, the documentation. So where can you find the information about the new NVIDIA CUDA toolkit, the, um, all the tools, especially the CUDA tools that are available within that. Last section will be the Cray programming environment. The Cray programming environment, which is uh, released monthly by Cray, in this case, you will have access after the mid of May to the Cray programming environment of April 2015 that will be released during this month. We will talk about the changes that will affect also the users in terms of default modules that will be available on Pete's Day end after the upgrade. In fact, many of you use default modules. We need also to upgrade from time to time the default versions that are loaded once you load log in on the system. So that's why that, that's an important issue to be discussed again. And again, as I said before, you are free to ask questions during the webinar at the change from section to the next section in the chat room. And my colleagues will take care of answering to your questions. Please kindly note that this is a technical seminar, so we can only answer technical questions. So please don't ask questions related to policy that might be answered only by the management. You are always free to contact us uh, offline through the mailing channel of CSCS otherwise. So let's go on and let's talk about the first topics of this webinar, the Cray Linux environment. So the upgrade of the Cray Linux environment will involve having the new Cray Linux environment CLE 5.2 up 02. The Cray Linux environment 
is the operating system that is available on Cray systems, XC30 included. The Cray 6.2 will provide new functionalities, new changes with respect to the version that we currently have on PITS the end of the CLE, that is CLE 5.1. CLE 5.2 APO 2, the release, <clears throat> will be available on Pits Dynt as of May 12th, so after the next uh, month's maintenance that will take place on May 11th and 12th. The main source of uh, uh, information and documentation about uh, CLE 5.2 is uh, available on the Craig Docs portal, that is docs.craig.com, and here I put it in uh, uh, reference the Cray book that is the reference document for CLE 5.2 in particular. So the, mo the most important uh, uh, issue about the new CLE is, are the compatibilities and differences with respect to the previous operating system that we had on Pitstain, that we currently have on Pitstain. So applications and binaries that are compiled already, that so previously compiled, may need to be recompiled. Doesn't mean that you have to, but most likely you will have to. Binaries compiled for early releases of CLE might still run on CLE 5.2 without needing to be recompiled in general if the binary is, is dynamically linked. So that's also possibility. Unfortunately, you might have to recompile even if it is dynamically linked in some cases. One important thing to note is that statically linked binaries using directly or indirectly the network interface libraries, that is Eugenie or DMAP, for instance, they must be relinked. This is affecting most of users since this includes applications that use the MPI library or SHMEM library as well as the code to take advantage of the PGAS, the Partition Global Address Space. So languages such as UPC, Fortran, using core arrays, and Chapel. So this is because DMAP, the Distributed Shared Memory Application, and Eugenie, the user-level and generic network interfaces provided by Cray, are tied to the specific kernel version of the operating system. So Cray does not provide any backward compatibility or forward compatibility. Therefore, most uh, of the statically linked applications using the interconnect will need to be recompiled. Now, what about the enhancements of provided by CLE 5.2 in terms of uh, the user space? So most of the new features will, of course, uh, involve the system level, so system administration. But some of these features might have an impact also to, to users although this might be transparent to you. The first important thing to note is that the base operating system for CLE 5.2 is slash 11 SP3. This is a stable distribution of Linux that has been used also in other systems, non-Cray systems at CSCS. Another important feature is the memory compaction. So this operating system is able to move physical pages of memory to defragment or compact physical memory in order to prevent or recover from memory fragmentation. This might help in case of your program being re released from a, an allocation and so allowing to, let's say, a better management of the memory on the node. Another key uh, enhancement is related to the resource utilization reporting, also called RUR. This is a system-wide per application resource statistic framework provided by Cray that supersedes previous uh, tools also provided by Cray like CSA, Comprehensive System Accounting, Mazama, ACR, the application completion reporting that are no more available. So what are the enhancements in RUR? These are mainly related to uh, plugin writing. In fact, RUR works with plugins that will give you access to different metrics as we will see in the next slide. So, it will be able to display Python exceptions if there is an error in uh, posting a new plugin for both memory and energy plugins. And it will use also, it will be able to pass the JavaScript object notation format. So there will be no need uh, 
let's say, to reparse text data in order to post-process IUR uh, output data in case of there is a huge amount of data to be to be analyzed. Now, another enhancement that is important in its indirectly to the user in its effects is the reservation level cleanup enhancement. In fact, now the interaction between ALPS and the node checker will be enhanced. The cleanup process will be a two-stage process. So both after the application exit and after the batch system will release the node reservation. That is, after your job allocation in general quits, so it releases the node, there will be a double stage check on the node that is done at system level. And sometimes in the past, we had some issues related to memory not released or a node not released in a good state. And this will help uh, enhancing the uh, management of uh, node allocation. Just a brief slide on the resource utilization reporting, RUR. Since uh, recently, we got some uh, questions from you about the tool and about some files that you noticed you have in your home folder. So the resource utilization reporting is a great tool for gathering statistics on how system resources are being used by applications. It has an extensible infrastructure with plugins that can be easily incorporated in the tool they are enabled to collect process accounting data, for instance, energy usage, GPU accounting, and more than that. Now, RUR, as many of you have noticed, is enabled by default on Pitsdaint. So that is, after your job will finish, you will find a small report file on your home folder with some information. Now, with the default setting, the outputs will be recorded in your home folder, but you can change that redirecting the output to another folder in another location if you create the specific file called user output redirect in the .ir folder. Now information on how to do that is explicitly step by step explained in our CSCG report so you don't have to worry at the moment. You just have to know that there is this information available and so in case you wish to redefine the location, you can do that. Now, the default output of RUR, when a job completes, will show you the task stats, GPU stat, and energy information. So task stat will be basic information on system time, real time, GPU stat, information on how many seconds you use the GPU, and energy, the amount of energy that has been used in job. For each of these entries, you will have the user ID, that is your user uh, identification, the ALPS ID, so the process ID of the ALPS manager of Cray, the SLURM job ID, that is the identification of the scheduler of, the, of your allocation, and then the name of the executable. As for the location, the user may also override the default report type by specifying a valid report type also in another file in .rur that is called user underscore output underscore report underscore type. Valid report types will be APID, job ID, job ID, and or single. So these three different report types will have a different behavior in the sense that your data will be written either one file per application or one file per job schedule or a single file cumulatively reporting your jobs and your uh, runs. For more information, as I mentioned previously, you can always turn to the CSCS user portal. In particular, for RUR under the section performance tools, you will find an explanation step by step on how to customize the output of the RUR reports. So let's now summarize uh, with the documentation that is available on CLE and create documentation in general. Cray provides books and manual pages that can be accessed in different ways. One is CrayDoc, a Cray documentation portal, a delivery system that is available online. It enables 
to access quickly and search for create books, man pages, and in some cases also third-party documentation. You can have access to this documentation either in PDF or HTML. If you log in the create doc public website at uh, docs.create.com. Another source of information are the manual pages. The man pages, these are textual help files available from command line on any Cray system. You generally can access the uh, uh, content that you wish after loading the corresponding module. Many of the modules are already preloaded by default, but in some cases you might watch out and, and look if the module that you wish is uh, uh, actually loaded. So the man command will be followed by the, inform by, by, the, um, by the name of the man page that you wish to access. For more information on the man pages, you can always see also the man, man that is a documentation on man command itself that will be available on the shell. At this point, we are over with the first section. So in case you wish to quickly ask for more questions on this section, you're welcome to do that on the chat. Otherwise, we will still have time at the end of the presentation, so don't worry, because we will leave plenty of time for the discussion in case you have doubts. And my colleagues available that are experts in different fields will uh, be pleased to answer your questions. Let me just check quickly. Let me just give you a couple of minutes. So, next topic, next section of this webinar is the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. And in particular, the upgrade of the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit to version 6.5 on Pete's Dane. Now, what is the NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit? It features compre a comprehensive development environment to build GPU-accelerated applications, including several tools provided by NVIDIA. For instance, a compiler, NVCC, for NVIDIA GPUs, math libraries, tools for debugging and optimizing your application's performance. Of course, these are to be used, let's say, in a complementary way with the officially supported tools that we have at CSCS on create systems, like Perf tools for performance evaluation and DDT as our official, officially supported debugger. NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit provides as well programming guides, user manuals, API reference, online documentation. So there's plenty of documentation on the NVIDIA doc portal. And in particular, NVIDIA is also a developer portal that is developer.nvidia.com. In particular, you have the CUDA zone for programmers that intend to port their applications on the GPU accelerator using CUDA as a framework. Now we will highlight in the following slides the main features of the upgrade of bring brought by CUDA Toolkit version 6.0 and 6.5 as until now we had version 5.5 .5 on Pete's Taint. In terms of general CUDA and enhancements, you will have now the unified memory, which will enable memory access by both the CPU and the GPU without the explicit need of copying data from the CPU to GPU, provided that this data, of course, is available on the host, so the CPU. There will be also the possibility to have remote direct memory access from GPU Direct supported under the multiprocess service. It is a, a feature that enables multiple tasks processes to access the device in a concurrent way. Added support for reading a register value from another thread in the same warp for all first class types using shuffle intrinsics. And then improved driver error reporting, which will give you more details to help finding the cause of a potential problem, the potential cause of a problem. So before there used to be several uh, cryptic messages that will be improved now. In terms of CUDA libraries, there will be now 
static libraries provided as well as dynamic ones for QBLAS, QSPERS, QFFT, and QRAND and NPP. And there are several enhancements in terms of performance for the routines defined by the libraries mentioned above. In particular, if you are interested in the specific, in the details, please have a look at the release notes of the CUDA toolkit version 6.0 and 6.5 that are listed here below, because these contain the full reference for the new features in the upgrade. About CUDA tools, there will be new features as well. In terms of CUDA GDB, for instance, now the base code will be from upgraded from GDB 7.2 to GDB 7.6. This will make it possible to support distributions that use GCC 4.8. Also, CUDA profiling tools interface, CUPTI, has been improved. Now, this includes MVPROF as a profiling tool and CUDA memcheck for checking memory. They will work now with multiple processes, sharing the single GPU as you do on the end under the multiprocess service MPS that we, you can activate with environment variables and you can find reference for this on our uh, CSCS user portal. Another tool is the MVPrune, which help reducing the size of your GPU code by retaining the compiled code for user-specified architectures only. For instance, you can select the architecture SM underscore 35, that is the one that we have on the end, Tesla K20X, and then this will retain only the optimized version of the code for this particular architecture, for instance, in loop kubla static.8. So this will have reducing the overall size of your code. The CUDA occupancy calculator, which provides programmatic access to performance metrics, and it uses now the header CUDA underscore occupancy dot H. There are also now reference type parameters supported for global functions at variance with before. The NVIDIA Visual Profiler as well has been upgraded with several features. And there is also an improved support now for CUDA Fortran on command line debugging and profiling tools for PGI version 14.4 and newer. An important remark on deprecated features in both CUDA Toolkit 6.0 and 6.5. So features that you cannot use anymore. There is a list of architectures that are deprecated, so are not supported by the CUDA <clears throat> within the CUDA Toolkit. Now this is the list of SM underscore 10 to 13. This is important because although, of course, its dent architecture is SM underscore 35. Sometimes when you build your, when you write your code in the compiling script, you also give optimization flags for many other architectures. But unfortunately, this cannot work on the same command line. So you have to provide some if statements in your build script in order to prevent failure from the build process, since this is a deprecated, these are now deprecated architectures. So, Pay also attention to developing and running 32-bit CUDA and OpenCL applications on x86 because NVIDIA claims the support will be still available in the toolkit and the driver, but it might be dropped in future releases. So this means that new features may not have support for 32-bit applications on x86 Linux. Some minor, uh, probably not so uh, of daily use, but it might have an impact. The CUDA video encoder, which uh, might be used for uh, encoding that video data sets. The support for building applications with the encoder interface is now deprecated the NV QVANC. You will have to use the newer one, NVANC. And the CUPTI activity records, there is a little change. They just, they have changed names. This, is, uh, this involves the CUDA Activity Global Access and the CUDA Activity Branch. So these are source level information uh, uh, record. About performance improvements on general CUDA. The latency of launching a child kernel, so agreed, from the GPU using dynamic parallelism has been reduced. And the multiprocess service, the MPS performance, has been improved as well. So 
the launch performance has been improved from 7 to 5 microseconds, and launch and synchronized performance has been improved as well from 35 to 15 microseconds. Improvements also include a math library. So performance improvements for several single and double precision functions available include a 6.5. In particular, the function listed below, single precision 8 and expo exponential functions, hypo TF and R hypo TF. And double precision improvement, double improvement for double precision functions, A cos H, A tan, and the, the other ones listed below. There is also a, to remark, a performance improvement of the double precision square root function, as well as the double precision reciprocal square root function. So this is available for compute capability, GPU with compute capability 2.0 and above only. For more details, so a summary of the most important improvements, you might want to have a look at the devblogs.nvidia.com when there is an interesting article on 10 ways could the 6.5 improves performance productivity. Documentation. As I mentioned before, the main source of documentation is the NVIDIA documentation portal, available on docs.nvidia.com. In particular, for developers, as already mentioned, you have the CUDA toolkit developer zone, so developer.nvidia.com slash CUDA toolkit. You can find useful uh, source for codes, for testing, and useful hints for compiling and for building your application on the accelerators. You can also have access to uh, documentation that is located on the system through the module help command, module help CUDA toolkit, will give you a set of information. You can have a, a small uh, example on the right side of the screen. So if you type module help CUDA toolkit on the system now, you won't see that because this is the newly upgraded system. You will see something similar to that that is uh, in the screenshot. As you see, the module help will have further levels which you, can, which you can browse because you will, will you can also have information on items within the CUDA toolkit like MVCC compiler, runtimes, libraries, uh, and so on. You can also access information of CUDA tools directly by typing the name of the CUDA tools like MVCC dash dash help. Same holds for the CUDA debugger CUDA GB dash dash help and for the other tools as well. Now we are over with the second section about the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. So I will leave you again a couple of minutes in case you wish to ask more questions. Although anyway, the, we will have question time also at the end of the webinar. Just let me have a look. Yeah, I see that you're getting your replies. So, <laughs> okay. So let's let's go on then. So let's jump to the last section of the of today's webinar: the Cray programming environment. Now, the Cray programming environment in particular on Pitstand. The Cray programming environment is released by Cray on a monthly basis. So each month we, we will have a new release a new, with updates, bug fixes. It, it uses the modules framework and that help uh, managing different libraries that you have once building your applications. In particular, once you log in uh, on a Cray system like Pitstand, you have a set of preloaded modules by default. In particular, you have the programming environment Cray that is loaded. You see here a screenshot. If you type module list, you can show 
it can show you the currently loaded module files. And you see here programming environment crane number 20, <clears throat> which also highlights, sorry, which also highlights the CLE version 5.2. There are other libraries and modules preloaded that comes with a programming environment. In particular, in the case of the Cray programming environment, you have the CCE, so <clears throat> the main Cray compiling environment, which will be upgraded to version 8.3.10. You have the Cray lib side, Cray scientific libraries, and you have the Cray uh, MPI interface, that is the uh, Cray MPitch, which will be available in version 7.2. Of course, you can always change the compiling environment using the common module swap. And in the screenshot uh, uh, below, you have uh, a module swap from the Cray programming environment to the GNU programming environment. Then if you type again module list, you will see the changes. The change doesn't only affect uh, the programming environment module number 24, in this case, programming environment GNU. It will also affect other modules like you have now loaded at number 10, GCC 4.8.2. The upgrade of the Cray programming environment for the XC series, which includes Pittsburgh and XC30, will provide, the, will consist the, in the new Cray developer toolkit, CDT 1504, version of April 2015. There are a list of products that have been updated by Cray within this release, and this includes the following. As I mentioned before, the Cray compiling environment, CC, it will get updated to 8.3.10, and this always includes bug fixes. The Cray message passing toolkit, MPT, which in, includes the MPI library that in, will be upgraded to version 7.2.0. Then the Cray environment setup and compiling support, that is mainly for building supporting libraries, which will be updated as well. The Cray package generator, Cray PE to version 2.3.0, and Cray modules. Then, more importantly for users, the Cray scientific and math libraries, CSML, which will include PET-C, version 3.5.3.0, Trilinos, version 11.12.1.2, that has been used uh, by several users, and the third party scientific libraries, version 1.4.4. There is an upgrade also of Cray performance measurement analysis tools, so CPMAT, which includes CrayPAT, in perf tools that will be upgrade, upgraded to version 6.2.3, including bug fixes and enhancements, which we collect always from users that have troubles in using the Cray performance analysis tools, and Cray always uh, proactively solves bugs related to that in order to improve application support. And also the Create Debugging Support Tools, which we get upgraded as well. Last but not least, the third-party license product DDT, which is our official support, officially supported debugger DDT, will be upgraded to version 5.0. Now, what are the implications of uh, the CUDA and the programming environment updates for users? So we already mentioned we are going to upgrade to CUDA 6.5. This will have the latest PGI compiler 14.9 supported, <clears throat> and the latest scraper of tool 6.2.3 that will be supported as well. Now, in case you wish to use uh, MPI GPU to GPU, so communication from device to device, uh, you need to use MPT version 7.1 or higher. So that's also an important feature because Earlier version do not support this feature. Lead SIAC, the uh, Cray Scientific Libraries accelerated version, will be upgraded, and version 3.1.1 must be used because earlier version will not be supported. One important notice about the GNU compiler, GCC 4.9 is not supported by CUDA 6.5. So on, on pit stand, we will still have 4.8.2 as default. As far as the accelerator, the accelerated scientific libraries, LibSciAC are concerned. So these are accelerated version or uh, LibSci uh, libraries, 
scientific libraries provided by Cray. Now, the new version, 3.1, supports the CUDA Toolkit 6.5 with some enhancements, like added environment variable to select, to select alternate algorithm to improve performance of the hybrid version of PDGEM, and also the same an environment variable to select an alternate algorithm to improve performance for the PZGEM. There are also performance improvements that can be achieved uh, in programs calling LibSciAC subroutines using pin memory. Please have a look at the man intro LibSciAC for more information. You can also always find information also using module help LibSciAC. Last but not least, uh, an important flag of AP run, the Cray version of uh, the MPA run is the dash CC known. This disables core affinity and it is strongly recommended to improve your performance. This has been used always in the past and uh, this is an important feature to take note of. More implications regarding the Cray message passing toolkit 7.2.0. There are performance improvements for Schman broadcast. An MPI 3 tools interface report is improved, now including a large number of Cray MPI environment variables. There is an optimized version of MPI IO reduced designed for ARIS. Now, applications relying on small message non blocking or reduced operation can use this feature to achieve a computation communication overlay. This has been made available only with the latest CLE 5.2 up 02. But it is not turned on by default, so please turn to MAN Intro MPI for details as well. There is a wealth of environment variables that are available for MPI, improving MPI performance on your code. In fact, Cray provides in MAN Intro MPI a full featured list of these environment variables that in many cases help solving performance issues that you report to us. Sometimes this gets included in default environment once uh, a Cray bug is filed, and uh, so it is important also that you get us, that you get back to us with your feedback. The new Cray message passing toolkit includes also, as other modules, several bug fixes. And if you use module help, you will see in the output of module help a list of known issues that have been filed and have been reported in Cray bugs that are fixed by the latest release for which you ask help in the, on the shell. Another important thing to mention is the changes that will occur in default modules in Pitsdained. Now, some legacy version as well might be removed too from the modules available on uh, on your interface. This is because we want to keep up to date with the most recent versions of some software and also to avoid maintaining a, a legacy software that is performing not this is performing poorly on the the environment. Regarding the compilers, the Cray compiling environment will be upgraded to 8.3.10 from the previous 8.3.4. And PGI as well is now will be PGI 14.9. Communication libraries will be changing default as well. CrayGA, which has been used to fix uh, uh, an issue in DMAP headers, will be upgraded to version 5.3.01. Cray MPH, the MPI, the Cray MPI environment is upgraded as well to 7.2, and Cray Shmem as well. As far as numerical libraries will be concerned, the Cray LibSci will be upgraded to version 13.03 from 13.01. And Cray libsci as well will be upgraded, upgraded to version 3.1 from 3.0. FFTW provided by Cray will be upgraded as well. And this will fix also a small bug that we have been not noticing in the past. Cray third-party scientific libraries module will be upgraded, as well as Cray 3 Linux and Cray C, solving bugs that we filed thanks to your suggestions in the past as well. As far as performance tools are concerned on the right side of the slide, as I mentioned before, perf tools, including perf tools, 
light version will be upgraded to version 6.3.2. Perftool's light version is the one that we support for the performance report of your performance analysis to be attached to the proposal that we, you will submit by the deadline at the, on, the, on May the 8th. IO libraries as well, create parallel and NetCDF will be upgraded and debuggers. As mentioned before, DDT, that is the officially supported debugger CSES on create platforms and non-create system as well, will be upgraded to version 5.0. Supported scientific applications it, uh, of major interest to some of you since you used to have uh, loaded these modules in order to to have the most efficient uh, uh, version compiled on your on on your environment. Excuse me for that. In particular, we decided to to switch the default modules of some of the supported scientific applications to the latest ones. CP2K will move the default from an old version that we had to 2.6. That is the latest stable release available online. Then Quantum Espresso in the module Espresso will be also changing default to 5.1.2. Gromax as well, the latest Gromax stable release is 5.0.4. Therefore, we'll no more have the 4.55 that also doesn't support GPUs. So there's little in, in importance on pit time. And then LAMPS software will be change default to the latest release that we have installed successfully on using the CUDA driver 6.5 that is the, 10, the release of February 10, 2015. As I mentioned before, some legacy versions of these applications as well might be removed. We will try to contact you in case we see that you are users of specific uh, versions, specific releases, so that we can uh, uh, help you, assist you during the change as smoothly as possible. As far as the documentation is concerned for the Cray programming environment, as I mentioned previously, manuals and user's guides are available on the Cray programming environment as well on the Cray doc portal. And you can still use also the man or module help commands on systems, so locally. More details can be retrieved by selecting a specific topic of the CRAP, specific item within the CRAP. For instance, module help CC will give you explicitly the help page of the CRAP compiling environment. The CSCS user portal available at user.cscs.ch also gives you some basic information, let's say how to get started on the building side on Cray systems. And you can find this information under the section compiling your code that is available. On the right side, you have, a, again, a screenshot showing what the module head command can provide you. And this is updated to the CLE version and the Cray programming environment version that you will find on the system on Pitsdine after May the 12th. For further information, I still wish to stress this important, these important uh, websites, the, the CSCS user portal, the CREA documentation on docs.cray.com, and the NVIDIA documentation on docs.nvidia.com. Of course, for offline uh, information, you can always contact us. So the main channel for contacting us is help at cscs.ch, and we will uh, manage to provide you an answer as soon as possible for your inquiry. As far as this section on uh, Cray programming environment, uh, we are uh, at the end. So I thank you for your attention. And uh, we open the question and answer time at the moment. So please just use the chat if you have uh, further questions. Let me switch as well to this. Yes, one uh, important one important highlight about CUDA. 
CSCS will be pleased to deliver a course on CUDA on June 18, 19. You will find details on this event on the CSCS event webpage. So CSCS.ch main page and then look for events, future events. Okay, I see that the question time is going on. I think at this point I can stop sharing the slides on my screen. <laughs> 